After we finished benchmarking the crap out of this little 7700X, we immediately proceeded to put it inside of an oven and observe if that sweet little cooler is able to save its life. Uh, it was not. No, the topic of cooling down a Ryzen 7000 chip is a hugely debated one right now. Everybody is learning new stuff on the fly, and we did also learn quite a lot between the first two chips that came in and the 7700X, this one here, and the 7950X that came a couple of weeks behind. So far, we have learned that the topic is not only complicated. To put it short, imagine you have a house fire and you're trying to put it out. But the only thing at your disposal are buckets filled with gasoline. No, so far we seem to know that everything reset at stock, there is a target temperature and a certain amount of max power that will be going through the socket. So let's say that you have a really good cooler and underneath you have a 7700X. By default a 7700X is rated to be running at 105 watts TDP. <laughs> Um, if you have a really good cooler, the power that will be going through the socket is actually more like 138 watts. The problem here is that the last 20 watts are actually just waste, nothing else, it's, it's just unnecessary waste. Take our 7950X benchmark as an example. When left unchained, this thing pulled 225 watts through the socket. Then we manually limited the TDP to be acting like a 105 watts chip which resulted in the chip then burning 145 watts to the socket, which is a lot closer to the 170 watts TDP target of the chip, but instead of having the chip's performance halved, it ended up being an average of minus 1% in total, minus 3 in software and plus 2 in gains. But very, very far from actually throttling the CPU's capabilities. And here is also where the unnecessary waste comes in. As far as we could tell for now, once you, you've reached a certain threshold of potential performance, the CPU will not stop pushing more and more juice into the chip, even if there is nothing to gain. And the problem with that is that the number 95 is no longer a hard limit, it's a freaking target. So let's say you are pulling 100% performance out of your chip, and you have the beefiest AIO in, in the world, which would be capable of pushing down the temps to, let's say, 60 degrees C. Well, the chip will just push more and more and more juice into itself until the temperature reaches 95 or until the hard TDP limit hits, which again is, is very far from what is advertised on the box. So let's take a real world scenario for once. At the 7700X, it, it doesn't really matter if you take an Arctic Liquid Freezer 420 or a 240. Both of them will be capable of keeping the CPU below 95 degrees C, hence the CPU will push more and more and more power until it gets back to 95, without any gain in performance. Great. Now, this creates a whole range of issues, starting with the fact that, that fans, or at least the CPU fans, are bound to its temperature. And now apply this problem to a 7950X. No matter what you do, the fans will ramp up to 100% all the freaking time. Very problematic. This is a topic on its own. I just wanted to explain why we did things the way we did it. So the approach is pretty similar to what we did on the 7600 and 7900 index. First, I determined how much juice the CPU can pull through the socket, which turned out to be 138 watts. From there, I manually set the V-Core to 1, 0.35 volts and then multiply it to 52. If I run now a CPU-Z stress test, this creates a 138 watts load indefinitely, which is exactly what we need to permanently test the cooler. From here, I took our trusty old CPU benchmark list, but without any actual numbers, because they are all tested on top of a 3900X. However, their performance relative to each other still remains the same. Each line would just be a bit more squished on the left side or expanded on the right side, depending on the amount of heat we put in. Now, the idea here is, if I force the CPU to push exactly 138 watts, which is also the hard limit for the chip that I have, if the cooler will be able to keep the CPU underneath 95 degrees C in a 20 degrees C room in that setting, this would also mean that the CPU will not start to reduce its power because the chip would go above 95 degrees C in a default setting. Now this is also completely ignoring the fact that those last 10 or 20 watts are just unnecessary. I am aware of that and it is a waste, but I am trying to determine 
which cooler are okay for the 7700X. Like the, the minimum limit to be 100% sure. No matter what weird stuff the, the power management system does. This also means that only the coolers that are passing today's test will not be the type of cooler which will ramp up to, to crazy RPMs because they can keep the CPU cool no matter what. To start on the bright side, all of, of, no, most of the bigger AIOs were able to keep the CPU underneath 95 degrees C while pushing 138 watts all the time. Our bigger liquid freezers, be quite silent loops, and all of those were perfectly fine. It's not as bad until here. But the trend does continue for quite some time until Noctua's NHD15, which manages to keep the CPU at 89 degrees C, for example. Quite a good result, meaning that left unchained, the cooler will not ramp, all the time at least, during higher loads. From here, however, it does quickly became a bit heated. The Noxia NHU12A, for example, this one managed to keep it at 91 degrees C, which is already pretty near the heart limit for today. But from here on, it pretty much stagnated for a very long time. The Scythe Mugen, for example, kept it at 92.4 degrees C. Even Noxia C14 managed to perform surprisingly well at 92.4. And this list then continued on until we hit rock bottom. The Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 in black. This one scored 93.8. And this is also the absolute last one which did manage to keep it below 95 degrees C. From here on, the list was all 95 plus, making all of those unsuitable to keep the CPU cool under all circumstances. However, do not take this list as a, as a free pass to get a pure rock slim and call it a day. The fact that it is on the green list does not mean it's going to do a good job. Because that 95 degrees C is not a hard limit anymore, but it's a target, it's kind of difficult to explain. Let's look at it this way. The absolute limit of 138 on my chip is reached with the Pure Rock 2. This doesn't mean that the Montec Air 210 will let the 7700X thermal throttle and die. And it doesn't do that because the last 10-20 watts of the CPU are just unnecessary waste. There is nothing to be gained except for it being obsessed with that 95 degrees C target. So what would happen if you would use a uh, Montec Air 210 is that the fan on the cooler will just ramp up practically all the time. And the further down you go from a pure rock, the more often this will happen. Of course, at some point it will thermal throttle, or just shut down like in my case, but none of the coolers on this list will produce such a result. However, the higher you go, the less likely the ramping is bound to happen. And this is kind of the point. If left unchained, it will always try to go to 95 degrees C, which will make your fans ramp up to max speed. And the thing is that you are not forced to endure this behavior. At some point you will get into things like, for example, Noxia U12A. This one was able to keep the CPU at 91.3. And that 91.3 also means that even if your CPU will think it needs to push more than advertised TDP, you know, because it can, even then the Noxia U12A can keep it below that target, meaning that the hard TDP limit will hit first and actually have a, you, you will have a chance of combating that annoying phenomenon. And from here on up, the higher you go, the more space you get between the CPU wanting to get to 95 and the TDP hard limit hitting. So we basically have two lists. This is the one that your CPU will survive. You can go with any of the green ones and expect the CPU to perform like advertised on the box. However, prepare for suicidal thoughts cause the fans are going to ramp up like crazy. For people whose insurance policy doesn't include psychiatrists, we have this list. Everything green is acceptable and the further up you go, the more you show your 7700X that your cooler is stronger than its will to spontaneously light on fire. And yes, I know that in my 7600X video, the can survive list looked a lot darker. However, on, on that point, I didn't know how much a Ryzen 7000 chip will try to get to 95 degrees C. And for that video, I say temperature limit of 90, which was a bit hard. Actually, you can, you can make a survive list that should look like this and the list that I would, I would actually recommend would look like this. But okay, on that note, I guess this was it for today. I hope this was helpful or that the whole 
Ryzen temperature thing was in the very least understandable. And I really do hope that I don't find out something tomorrow that makes this whole video unnecessary. I, I really, I really hope so. If you want to continue watching, have a look at our take on the Ryzen 7 900X. And thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.